Hi, Michelle. Great to uh, have you in our podcast today, One to Taste Talks Food Ingredients. And we're focusing in this episode on the, um, on the alcoholic beverage industry uh, and the beverage industry maybe also a little bit wider. Um, for the people that do not know you, Michelle, maybe you can introduce yourself briefly and your company. Yes, thank you for having me, Jasper, and um, uh, nice to be here. My name is Michel Goldbach. I'm the uh, operational director of Dutch Essentials. And Dutch Essentials, we are a Dutch-based extraction company who is producing eucalyptus oil for the food and beverage industry, um, but also other extracts which are used in food and beverages, such as vanilla in different folds with or without alcohol, uh, we have our laboratory, which is equipped for all sorts of different extracts, um, which can be requested by the client. So we have very versatile business uh, going on. The eucalyptus, uh, we grow it on our own plantation in Portugal. And uh, basically, we are fully European based. So that's uh, Dutch Essentials in a nutshell. Yeah, well, being European-based uh, supply chain, eh, because that's where we're going to zoom in with you uh, today. So can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the, the challenges uh, in, in supply chain and supply security? Yeah, I think everyone that's been through COVID and was running or owning a business actually see, saw a lot of supply chain issues in the last two years, I think uh, many of them are already uh, resolved, but uh, I think it has been a good wake up call, uh, especially on our dependence on supply chain. So what we saw personally is that especially the things um, which you would not consider very important suddenly do become very important once you cannot get hold of them. So as I said in the intro, we have, for instance, a laboratory uh, for doing R&D, quality control, etc. And due to the COVID crisis, for instance, we could not get hold of any laboratory supplies. Think about pipette tips, which are, which are being used in any COVID testing lab. So out of the blue, we could not get any pipette tips. So, so um, even though we are European based, we still are depending on a, on a Chinese supply chain. On the other hand, uh, we started our business not just before COVID, and uh, it was actually rather slow for us to get started because we are European eucalyptus oil manufacturer, which is, of course, uh, we, we differentiate ourselves in quality and certification, um, but our main competitor is China. So what we actually saw as a benefit in the supply chain issues uh, some time ago is that people started sourcing from Europe. And this turned out to be a bit of a challenge as well, because most of the manufacturing does not take place in Europe anymore. So we've seen, let's say, two sides of the, of the story. Uh, do, you, do you sometimes also uh, promote the fact that uh, because you're European, uh, your carbon footprint is probably also lower, yes. uh, which also helps in sustainable... Uh, yes, yeah. So, so what we notice, of course, there's quite some market trends. They seem to change every year, of course, and, and we also go along with that. So, so we started out basically with our certificates of quality. Of course, our, we started with kosher, halal, FSC, uh, organic. Uh, but now you see indeed a, a large trend in carbon footprint, carbon emissions, etc. So if we compare our carbon footprint to, for instance, oil, which, which is being imported uh, over the oceans, uh, huge cargo ships, uh, of course, our footprint is much, much lower. So, so yes, this is something we do use in our conversations. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a, an important aspect uh, to the future as well. I don't think sustainable uh, is, is a temporary trend. I think it's, it's one that, that will stick uh, and actually will, will grow in importance. But that's, that's my opinion. If you, if you look at your customers, eh, um, eh, we're, we're talking about uh, the small and medium-sized enterprises. And um, do, do you see that they, they, um, they have challenges in, in the lead times or uh, for, for ingredients? And, and what would be your advice? 
Yeah, I do see challenges. It, it, it tends to differ in, in different products. So in the laboratory supplies, we've seen that all issues have been resolved, which is good. Um, uh, but now we face other challenges. Of course, we have uh, we are seeing a, through a war in Ukraine. Uh, we have all of these uh, embargoes which are in place in Russia. So this, for instance, is impacting steel imports. Just uh, one small example. And you would think, what what would Dutch Essentials have to do with any Russian steel? Well, we package our products in steel drums. And what we are seeing now, anything which is related to packing material, for instance, it's either really expensive, uh, it has huge lead times, or it's not even possible to get it. Uh, also jerry cans, for instance, it's really under pressure at the moment. So as a tip, I would say, make sure your supply chain is really on point. Right, you have to plan ahead. Many people, we used to work on a just-in-time principle. We order supplies when we need them because we know the lead times are quite short. I think we have to let go a bit of the just-in-time principle. Think ahead. It means you have to do a bit more capital investment, but it's better to do this capital investment than to have your customers waiting. And that's something that we like to do is we don't we don't like to keep our customers waiting we like to keep the lead time short we have a bit of supply here we have some stock this is for our account and the customer should not notice this yeah yeah so basically what you're saying is that hey your your customers should not suffer uh, from the variations in supply in the market um, and therefore um, it is advisable to and maybe at some in some cases put more stocks in um, than right. you would uh, in a well I wouldn't say normal situation anymore but uh, how it used to be a couple of years ago uh, how you would how it uh, used to be yeah I fully agree and uh, I think you're on point there uh, Jasper if you say how it used to be because um, it doesn't make sense to think about the past. It's, it's better to think about the future, think about going ahead. And I think it would be quite stubborn of any business person to think that we will go back to how it used to be. We're in a progressive situation and not in a conservative business environment. And I think that's my, my tip for anyone in, in business is to think progressively not conservatively in this respect because the markets are so volatile yeah. at the moment. Yeah, and, and that's probably not going to change any anytime soon. Um, so so um, in terms of complexity, uh, you, you were mentioning you have a, a building up also a range of ingredients. How do you deal with that complexity? Uh, how do we deal it? I don't know. We just do it, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> so I think any company uh, does a, a good job by, by diversifying its business. I think um, um, so we started basically only with eucalyptus oil as our core product. Uh, later, we noticed because we are, we are working with highly educated staff, they're all laboratory chemists organic chemist, uh, I'm a pharmaceutical chemist. So we have a lot of knowledge. And what we noticed that in the food and beverage industry, a lot of people, they, they just uh, got, got a job in the food and beverage industries. They stay there for 30 years. They have a lot of experience, but they are lacking scientific knowledge. Um, and we have this scientific knowledge. So what I noticed in the last uh, two years is that a lot of people, they came to me and they asked for, hey, can you also make an extract of this? Or can you purify this or distill this? And in all cases, I said yes. So, and, and by doing that, we were actually diversifying our business. And now uh, we are not saying we are a eucalyptus oil manufacturer, but we are a uh, company who, is, who has an expertise in distillation and extraction. And whatever you want to have, we can make it for you. So, and... I think also that is a bit the progressive nature that I'm thinking about in this current business uh, environment, um, not to have one most valuable product, but just diversify. And if it's in your capabilities, why would you not do it? True, true. Uh, if you have the equipment and, and if you have the knowledge, then uh, there's nothing that, that should hold you back, right? 
Um, I need to come to a conclusion, uh, Michel, uh, how I wish to, to continue, but um, uh, it, it, it is unfortunately uh, a time to wrap things up. Can you give us one, one last final thought in, on, on the supply chain uh, subject? Yes, I would say don't assume that we're going back to how it used to was. Adapt to the new situation and uh, go along with it. I think that's the best tip I can give. All right. I think that's a very useful tip um, uh, and, and, and one I certainly uh, underwrite. Uh, thank you very much, Michel. It was a pleasure to have you here uh, in, in our podcast today and we'll absolutely be in touch, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. Thank you very much, Jasper.